Okay, guys, we're going to be taking a look at Bitcoin's price action briefly this day and just to see what's going on and where I think things are heading next. As I get into today's video, if you do find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I really do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, subscribe and stay up to date with all the content that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Let's take a look at what's going on with Bitcoin then. So here we can see a fair amount of volatility with BTC, right? Uh, we are, of course, on the daily chart here, Bitcoin paired up with the USDT. We're going to start things off on the four hour though. So this is Binance chart four hour time frame. You can see here on this four hour time frame that we have had a death cross right here. Okay, this death cross, of course, hasn't had any knee jerk or negative reactions to the price action just yet. This is because it's a four hour time frame and it really does show you the volatility that's only occurred in the past day or so, or last week or so, I really. Um, and here we can see, of course, very negative price action. And the reason for this, of course, is the major spooks in the entire global financial markets. Now, now, with the death cross and with the price action moving up the way that it has done, I, I'm looking at this area as an upper area of previous resistance. OK, so this is looking likely to be a bit of a, a stumbling block, a bit of a, an issue for BTC right inside here between 58,449 and 59,650. This area right here is coinciding with our 50 EMA, the blue line, and the 50 SMA, the yellow line. And you can see here as well that 200. EMA is also tipping to the downside. Now, our momentum is heavily overbought on the one hour, four hour and eight hour timeframes. And as such, we should be expecting, unfortunately, to find resistance in this upper area. So as such, we are looking, unfortunately, more on the bearish side for BTC than on the bullish side on this smaller timeframe. OK, it's really hard to kind of ignore what we're looking at here for BTC. Now, if I bring this up to the daily time frame that means that this previous area right in here is going to be the area of resistance now on the daily time frame that happens to coincide with the 200 day EMA at fifty nine thousand three hundred and ninety four dollars okay you can see as well the 50 day SMA and EMAs are also turning down on the chart this is an indication that a daily death cross is looming as well for BTC so unfortunately with the current price action being lower than the 200 day EMA with that pocket of resistance also over here, which we saw on the kind of 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th uh, and 11th, in fact, of July, this whole entire area was resistance. We broke through it. We've lost it as any form of support. And now we are looking at that as resistance again. So this is going to be an area of volatility where we can potentially see a little bit of more slippage to the downside. Now, obviously, a lot of the bulls are going to be hoping that the swing low at $49,000 holds and that we do not lose it. If you lose that area, we are going to be looking for a bit more turbulence, a bit more pain to in the markets, taking Bitcoin's price down lower towards 45 and maybe even $42,000. So we want to be mindful that if we lose 49K, things are really not in a good spot. Alternatively, though, the bulls could potentially rally. And if they do, they will be looking at that 200 day EMA and looking for a daily close above it. If they can get a daily close above the 200 day EMA, as we saw on the 13th of July, then we could be in for a bit of a surge to the upside. The momentum on the smaller timeframes doesn't look good, but on the daily timeframe, Frame, it's not that bad. And we are looking for upward momentum shifting, indicating that there is potentially an appetite for buying uh, Bitcoin right now. So that could be the positive that we need. Expect some volatility maybe on the smaller time frames, but no big major swings that can be seen on the daily, indicating more of a upward momentum price action. If we change the stochastic into the relative strength index here, you can see that we still have plenty of momentum to the upside as well. Although we are lower than the 50 level, and usually the typical that would be a kind of bearish place to be, we can see that there is the potential for a bit more of a run to the upside before we get into any major collapses. So I think not all is uh, not all hope is lost just yet. We can see that the markets did get majorly spooked on the 5th of August. Um, and there's basically just looking to see whether or not we can get some confidence to come back in and start to see if there's another enough kind of demand and uh, momentum to get us above that 200 day EMA. 
Now, as I zoom out of this, we are in a very typical pattern of lower highs and lower lows. And this is something that we see time and time again, as I've spoken about before. And this isn't anything unusual. This entire correction from March to where we are today is actually quite normal within the realm of Bitcoin. It's not an unusual structure. And what I mean by that is we have a very much an overlapping candlestick nature here, indicating that there's no trend to the downside. Trends are normally very impulsive in the way that they go, and they're normally giving you straight lines. But instead, we have huge overlaps. And that overlap gives us confidence that this is just short term and not a trend, although we are lower than our 200 day EMA at the moment. And that can cause some concerns. So expect some volatility, but I'm not expecting terribly too much. And previously, this $49,000 area was also in resistance, turned to support, now support again. It also happened to be a huge area of liquidity sat down here, around $13 billion that was able to be extracted from the market during liquidations. So it's looking okay. I'm not concerned just yet, but I am expecting volatility. If I take this up into a weekly time frame, we can really take stock of the entire situation here and take a look at this correction as another minor blip in the radar. It's nothing as extreme as we'd even seen back in 2024, uh, sorry, in 2021, when we saw a big crash in the market before we got into the $69,000 all-time high. In fact, these kind of corrections that we've seen time and time again actually are a precursor to a big run to the upside. As I've spoken about many times before, and I'll probably end up talking about them again, 2025 is likely to be the bull market high where if we are to kind of keep this going for as long as possible, we could potentially be looking at $130,000 to $135,000 for the bullish market to complete sometime in 2025. If I bring on uh, some of the other indicators here, such as smart money concepts, you can see that we're still in bullish times. Yes, there's a couple of fair value gaps on the weekly chart. Equilibrium is also a key area of support coming in at $43,000. And this is also a previous area of concern consolidation, which is why a lot of people are speculating around $42,000 being a key area for Bitcoin to hold. Now, if we take the uh, smart money concepts off and throw on the Gaussian channel, you can see here that the Gaussian channel on the weekly time frame is also being tested out with that $49,000. As I've said many times before, only when you close inside the Gaussian channel after having a bullish time and a bullish market is when you start to see the bear market come on in. We haven't seen that on this Gaussian channel on the weekly time frame. Instead, we're looking for support on this. Now, that's not unusual either. If we come back, we can see here there was previous support found on the Gaussian channel before we got into the $69,000 all-time high. And the same can also be said when we started to see the previous 2017 highs. You come down here and we're bouncing and finding support on the Gaussian channel. It's only when we close inside the Gaussian channel are we in a bearish market. And that has happened every single time a bear market has come. The only exception is the pandemic that we had in COVID. This was a closed position in November of 2019. Outside of that, that was the first time we've ever had a bullish market without properly turning this Gaussian channel red. So for the Gaussian channel to be where it is today and with support being found in this lower range, everything here on uh, Bitcoin isn't actually all that bad and it is looking pretty decent in my humble opinion. In terms of order blocks, there are a few on here around 30,000 to 32,000. Uh, these are legacy blocks, in my opinion. Turn those ones off and put on the BB order blocks. On the weekly time frame, you can see that there's not a lot going on there either, where there are some sell orders, though, at around $80,000. So that's an interesting one to keep a note on. But for the most part, Bitcoin is kind of following its kind of path, as has done many times before, and as it will probably do in the future as well. Ultimately, Bitcoin for me is in a pretty good spot. We are tracking quite nicely and I am expecting 2025 to be a fantastic year for BTC and the crypto market. You can let me know what your thoughts are on all of this analysis in the comments down below and let me know what your price predictions are for BTC. If you found this video useful and informative, smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and check out this channel right here where I talk about a lot more technical analysis on a day-by-day -day basis.